Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, and hi, and welcome to Chart Industries webinar series titled How to Ditch the Widget. Uh, during this event, we will explore the benefits of implementing Chart Industries Ultra Doser Liquid Nitrogen Dosing System into your brewery's production line. And we also will provide valuable takeaways such as the advantages of producing nitrogen infused beers, preserving the taste and quality of your beer brew, and the financial benefits of nitrogen dosing. Um, at Chart, we have been perfecting the art of nitrogen dosing for uh, more than 30 years and have become the industry leaders in providing liquid nitrogen dosing technology to several of the breweries around the country um, who use nitrogen in the brewing process, both widget and non-widget nitrogen brews. Not only do we have the technology to take your brewery to the next level, we also are very passionate fans of the craft brewing, and I can safely say that many of us will be enjoying some of the uh, some of the brews that uh, you guys have have made uh, later on this evening. So uh, we want to thank you for attending our uh, webinar, and we want to thank you for the work that you do. Anyway, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, two of my uh, partners here. Uh, first of all, it's uh, Charts Business Development Manager Judson Voss. Hey. And uh, our fellow, Mr. Doser himself, Judson, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Tyler Jones. He is the project manager. Yeah, for, two guys named Judson Boss. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, absolutely. But, hey, uh, hey, guys, thanks for joining us. And for, without further ado, here's Judson. I got to go over real quick what our agenda is today. And we, we should be done in less than an hour, including uh, questions and answers, just to give you a time frame. What we're going to start off with uh, just explaining some of the basics of nitrogen dosing. Uh, some folks might you might know what a nitrogen doser looks like, what it does, and and for some this might be a brand new game. It's something that's new. It's something that's been existing in the food packaging industry for a long time, but it's fairly new for uh, for a brewery operation. So we wanted to discuss that a little bit. We're also going to talk about how nitrogen dosing is going to increase quality, increase your shelf life, uh, how you can go from uh, kegs to cans when it's time to start packaging that way, and how to do that affordably. Tyler at the end is going to have a a little bit of information sharing exactly what the cost savings are to, to go with the nitrogen doser. It's obviously very attractive. And then the second to last thing we're going to do is, is discuss uh, nitro beers and how you can make nitro beers in a can or in a bottle if you'd like while getting rid of the widget. And I, I will say too, and Tyler will touch on it, you can get rid of the widget or you can, or you can make the beers with widget. Um, it, it's not something that it's a, an either or situation. And the last thing is the big old sales pitch, which really isn't. None of us are sales folks, and we aren't going to sell anything to you today. And we don't have a notepad out here to take credit card numbers down with. But we are going to do a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, as Todd had mentioned before, throw those in the question box, and we'll hold those and, and get to them at the end. And I guess I, I did want to go over a little bit about what Chart Industries does. Um, I've got a slide here of... of a little bit about Chart and, and what we do and around the world. This is just our doser manufacturing and sales organization. Chart Industries itself is about a $1.2 billion company. We work in a lot of areas uh, in energy, LNG, and industrial gases. But this is our doser operation. We have a manufacturing facility in Canton, Georgia, and one in Fremont, California. And then in Canton, Georgia, we also have the uh, product development and, and sales group that's headquartered out of here. Throughout the rest of the world, we do offer dosers through in, independent distributors. And in Europe, we have a support team in, in Pershore that, that offers sales support and also technical support, along with the sales and service team down under in Australia. All right, guys. This is Tyler. I'm going to take over for, uh, for probably the duration of our, of our webinar here. Judson may chime in now and again, but fortunately, you won't hear from Todd. Um, <laughs> anymore uh, just a couple of the we're going to cover a couple of the dosing basics uh, we like to say we're dosing the world one drop at a time uh, so we're going to talk about what is nitrogen dose what is a nitrogen doser uh, where is a nitrogen doser used and uh, what other equipment is needed uh, for the dosing process or the dosing application so um, our next slide uh, you know this is actually in the words of a um, uh, the director of ops at Flying uh, Dog Brewery, a drop of liquid nitrogen vaporizes and eliminates oxygen from the bottle during the filling process, leaving the O2 content less than 100 parts per billion. Oxygen content is important. The lower, the better. The nitrogen does not affect the taste, but the purge and blanket stabilizes the flavor and gives us a longer shelf life. Um, that's just a, a, a nice quote that we, we had a, a customer of ours uh, give us. 
and uh, I'd like to show you what this is. This is a nitrogen doser. So this is the ultra doser, and the ultra doser is on the right. It's um, all stainless, um, and there's a controller that comes with that as well. And basically what the dosers do is they dispense a short burst of liquid nitrogen just prior to sealing, allowing for the liquid to expand to gas and be trapped. So essentially we just drop a drop of liquid nitrogen into a container, uh, whether it be a can or a bottle or uh, some other uh, form of packaging. And we uh, count on the uh, properties of physics and basically the uh, properties of cryogenics to uh, to do the work for us. Um, if you look on the right, you can see the ultra doser is actually the tall um, uh, hexagonal shaped stainless piece. It has the little small um, sticker on the top and, and a, it looks like two poles. The one, the pole on the left is actually the, where the liquid comes into the doser. And then of course it goes all the way down to the bottom section where you see all the electronics and the far left of the electronics is actually where it doses from. Um, and then just above that section, which we call that the dosing head, just above that is the controller. Uh, what you see there is the 500S. Um, we have uh, three different controllers. The 500S can do uh, 500 containers per minute or lower. The, uh, we have the FS150, which is 150 containers per minute or lower. And then we have one that's called the 2K. Um, and uh, most likely none of you would ever use the 2K. Uh, it can do 2,000 containers per minute uh, or lower. And this is all discrete dosing numbers, meaning that it actually individually doses a drop of liquid nitrogen in each container. And um, so you can imagine 2,000 containers per minute is pretty much a blur. Um, but if you were to use a high-speed camera, you could actually see uh, one droplet of liquid nitrogen hitting each and every container. Uh, one other thing uh, we want to talk about while we're in this, you know, uh, before I move into the complete dosing systems. A couple of the things we use dosers for is um, water bottles. Of course, you know, uh, um, you've noticed how flimsy and thin water bottles are. Um, that's because of liquid nitrogen dosing. Uh, essentially, the uh, drop of liquid nitrogen is um, placed in the headspace and then capped almost immediately, providing pressurization. Uh, so by taking this plastic uh, out of the bottle and making the plastic thinner, um, they save a whole lot of money. And it's in the million dollar range, uh, and if not more. And so uh, they like to say it's saving the environment, but it saves a whole lot of money and it creates frustrating moments of drinking water. Uh, that's kind of how the ball game started. What we do now, we do canned vegetables, canned uh, soups, smokeless tobacco. We just recently got into cannabis. Wine, uh, beer, of course. Dosing yeah. cannabis. Uh, dosing Just cannabis. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, didn't, <laughs> we recently didn't get into cannabis, um, but we started dosing cannabis in Colorado, um, and we do a lot of different things. Uh, pretty much anything that used to have to be refrigerated um, that's now on the shelf that doesn't have to be refrigerated until after opening is uh, usually nitrogen dosed. So. Um, that's just a few things of what uh, dosers do. So we've been around a long time, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Snapple Group, those kind of guys. You know, we're a global uh, company just like they are, and uh, they use us all the time for their systems. If you look here, this is a complete dosing system. Uh, the previous slide was a setup with a small liquid nitrogen uh, uh, doer uh, to an ultra doser. And then in this picture you see here we have a bulk tank or what we call a permacil that goes actually to a phase separator and then to the doser. Uh, essentially, the, um, the doser is, is actually open to atmosphere, so it's not a pressure vessel. But in the event that you have something like this, like a bulk tank or a permacil, uh, the pressures may be really high because you're using nitrogen and other plate parts of your brewery. So uh, what we, we say is you can use this phase separator, which you can see in the very top right corner. And what that does is that just literally separates the phases. It, it ensures that liquid is getting to the doser as opposed to any uh, gas that is created transferring the liquid to the doser from the bulk tank. Because as you know, is even though all this entire system is vacuum insulated, uh, at times that the longer the runs, the uh, more likely the liquid is to turn to gas. And of course, you're, you're never going to get uh, all liquid to your location no matter what the distance is. So that's just a couple of things. We consider ourselves turnkey because chart develops the pipe, 
the flex hoses, the phase separators, the dosers, and the bulk tank. So uh, we can supply all of your uh, brewing needs as far as that's concerned. So let's move into, um, this is actually a picture of uh, a recent uh, uh, demo we've done or a recent uh, opportunity we had. If you look here, you can actually see a stream of liquid nitrogen entering the can. And uh, this was taken with a, uh, a very nice camera. And you can see this is actually a stream of liquid nitrogen. A lot of people uh, think that, oh, we're just, we're actually just dosing gas. There's no way we can dose liquid. But um, if you were to slow it down even more, right as it exits, it's literally a droplet of liquid nitrogen. So we're talking pieces of a gram in, in weight, um, milliliters in volume, pieces of a milliliter in volume. Um, so you could see if uh, if we slow that down, if that was a video, you could see each single one being dropped with a drop of liquid nitrogen. Uh, in our next slide here, this is a, a setup. This is actually on a, um, a wild goose canning canning line, and you could see a lot of people wonder about space. They wonder about hey, can can the doser fit on my uh, on my line? And this is kind of a, a tight area here, but the, you can see the ultra doser fits just fine. Um, if you look in the bottom where the yellow cable is, that's actually a, a photo eye, and that's what we call, simply call a, a bottle detection uh, sensor. And it leads, it, it, it detects each can or bottle right before it gets to the doser, and then it doses. So if there's no can or anything passing by, it doesn't dose. Um, but as you can see here, it, every time a can passes, it'll dose. And it, you can see it fits no problem. Uh, on our next one here, here's another view. Uh, from down the line, and again, uh, a lot of people worry about space, and space is is, is key, especially in the smaller microbreweries, or or uh, you know you don't know uh, when you're storing cans or storing kegs, or you got your setup, you're moving these lines in and out, or maybe you're trying to find areas to set up your own line. Uh, the doser fits right in easily, and um, it's it's on it comes on its own stand, so it can move in and out if you need it to. Um, here's a, a uh, I believe this is a video, and uh, if you'll watch, it, it'll, they fill four cans at a time, of course, a lot of you know, and then it just doses each one as it passes by. So you can see it reads it, and there you can see it vaporizes as it hits the, as it hits the, the beer in the cans. So let's talk a little bit about brewery applications. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, pre-filling purge, post-fill purge, or um, post-fill dose, and nitro beer with and without widgets. So uh, first up is our pre-fill purge. Uh, so what we, we what this does is it preconditions uh, the can or the bottle. A, a, a nitrogen-rich environment uh, can be used for standard beers or nitro beers, and so what we're trying to do when we're um, pre-fill purging these, these cans or these bottles is we're trying to create that nitrogen-enriched atmosphere because you want to get that oxygen out. So uh, the better the, the environment is of the can or of the bottle, uh, the, more, the, the lower of your dissolved oxygen levels. Um, and uh, also larger containers, you know, your 22 ounces or uh, even if you're using growlers or, um, or even your, your smaller kegs, uh, you, you want to maybe precondition these to maximize your reduced dissolved oxygen levels. Um, when, when we do our post-fill dose, which is what you just saw a video of, uh, a, you know, we add that small drop of liquid nitrogen uh, to the head space. And uh, this dose uh, vaporizes uh, to aid in lowering dissolved oxygen levels. It adds pressurization and it replaces the widget in nitro, in nitro beers. Um, and this, pro this process improves shelf life, preserves your product, and it ultimately saves you money. And we'll talk about how it does that a little bit more later. Um, and then for nitro beers, you know, we're, we're saying uh, ditch the widget. You know, it, you don't need the widget if you if you got a doser. Um, and uh, you can even dose your standard beers uh, to give a nitro effect. And uh, we have the only perfected process to help you ditch the widget. And not only that, if you actually um, – and, you know, a widget needs a drop of liquid nitrogen. And we have companies out there that are using our dosers to charge their widgets. Uh, so in any case, a doser is used. Um, but, you know, for the microbreweries out there and whatnot, dosing instead of using a widget is much more cost effective. 
Yeah. And Tyler, can you speak just a second to that when you're saying more cost effective? I know you're going to go over cost at the end, but um, can you share some of the benefits of not carrying the inventory and that type of thing? Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at a, you're looking, when you get a can with a widget, you're, you have to take into consideration minimum can orders. And a lot of these people want you to order 96,000 cans or uh, 180,000 cans. And when you get into those kind of numbers, I mean, these people don't have the space. Mm -hmm. And so when you, if you want to prevent that, if you want to buy your, your, your normal amount of cans and, and whatnot that, Hey, I want to, I want to can uh, 30,000 cans. That's all you have to buy. Uh, with the doser, you don't have to carry all that inventory. You don't have to figure out where, where am I going to put that space. And not only that, you're, you can buy the same cans that you buy for any of your other brews. Um, when you buy a widget can, they're more expensive. So you're you're saving money not only in inventory and stock, but on just your overall costs when you're actually buying cans. Right. And by doing it that way, too, you get more flexibility in your production runs. Absolutely. now you don't have to go run a really large batch <laughs> of the, the same beer, stock it up so you have everything all the widgets run through, you have more flexibility to run one batch of one type of beer than a non-nitrogenated beer and then back and forth. That's absolutely right. Cool. <laughs> uh, we have this in here too, you know, uh, we do wineries as well. Um, wine, we predominantly use this as pre uh, preservation uh, in screw top wines. Um, and uh, uh, Chad Chatherman says, in my opinion, the addition of the chart liquid nitrogen dosing system to the bottling line resulted in the single most significant improvement in product quality during my 33 year tenure. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying the same thing about their uh, micro brews. So uh, here's an illustration. Uh, what we're going to talk about here is uh, just kind of give you a, a, a nice uh, static view of what a, a system looks like. Um, and now this is a crude drawing because I did it. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's not the best in the world. Um, but if you look at the, um, on the left there, we have the can filler. Um, and, uh, in the middle, there's the chart, uh, nitro fresh doser. And on the right, we have the capper or the seamer, depending on whatever you want to call it. Um, essentially, as you can see, there's a small little droplet there. A drop of liquid nitrogen is added, um, to a full can. And then the liquid nitrogen expands at a rate of 700 to one. So basically, uh, whatever the volume of that droplet is, it'll expand to 700 times that volume in gas. And um, the expansion uh, ev um, evacuates the air in the can or the bottle, uh, whatever it may be, lowering the oxygen content or the dissolved oxygen levels, and it adds pressurization. And a lot of times uh, when you're talking about this, you, some people say, well, I, I got to have one or the other. Well, you can have a little bit of both worlds. In water bottles, they want pressurization. So uh, where you see the capper and the doser, the capper would be much, much closer. Uh, for, uh, for in the instance of wine, they're looking at more preservation. So they're trying to get as much uh, oxygen out of the bottle as possible. So the, they, they might not get capped for three to five seconds. So, and, you know, three to five seconds can evacuate a lot of headspace. You don't, you wouldn't think that, but... Um, it can, it can do a lot of work in just a few a, a short amount of time. Uh, in our next slide here, uh, it's just another illustration. And, and uh, you look to your left, uh, and every, uh, the cans are moving to your, from left to right. Um, your cans come from your filler uh, to the charts nitro fresh doser, and, and then on to the seamer. And, and if you look, uh, I've got the uh, presumed headspace content uh, on the cans on the left. There's a lot of oxygen. There's a little bit of nitrogen. Uh, there's a little bit of argon in there because uh, what happens a lot of times is that when you when they when they fill these cans, there's a lot of what they call oxygen pickup. So it actually creates almost like a vacuum style or a, a vacuum like effect. So it draws air in. So you get a lot of oxygen in there. And then we're in the whole goal is to to dose with nitrogen. And then it, it expands beginning to press out the uh, the headspace air. So. As the nitrogen expands, it begins to create a nitrogen-enriched environment, pushing more and more oxygen and some of the argon out of the can. <clears throat> so um, we talked about dissolved oxygen levels just then. So here's the other part is pressurization. Um, and, you know, I think this picture says it all. It, it makes everything 
just that much more stackable. Um, space is a is a is a commodity in the, in your locations and your facilities. And when you dose, you're adding pressure to your cans, and by doing so, you're actually increasing the strength of your of your shipments uh, of your storage. You can stack these higher. Um, you can you can ship more of them because they can be stacked higher. And there's just a lot of benefits. I mean, when you look at water bottles. Uh, they actually, dosing them actually makes them stronger than they once were with the thicker plastic. So they found that they've even saved money on shipment costs and inventory costs because they can, they can stock more and they can take up less space. And that's another, another cost savings that we uh, afford you because um, by doing so, you can uh, ship more, you can stack more, and, and, uh, and you can just, um, it allows you more flexibility. Okay, before we go into coffee, yeah. throw one thing out there. Absolutely. And this is somewhat of a <coughs> boutique application for the doser in, in brewing, but um, as a lover of all types of Belgian beers, I love a, a good bottle-conditioned Belgian beer. And uh, oftentimes you'll find if you're doing a bottle-conditioned beer with a Cajun cork, it just takes a little bit of beer to stick on that, that cork. <coughs> it keeps that cork sort of stuck in there once the, the food product dries in there, mm -hmm. and it makes it difficult for the – the end user to, to get the cork popped out. And one great benefit of the nitrogen doser, we have quite a few folks out west that are using it for this. They're, they're dosing that nitrogen to just give it a, the headspace a little bit more pressure to pop that cork just a little bit quicker and a little less aggravation. Very nice. That was very boutique, I know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but it's out there, and that's just sure. another thing that we're able to do. And I'm going to answer one question real quick that, that came in. I'm not going to go through the technical questions, but I had a couple of questions already about the the, um, the slides, and the slides will be emailed to everybody afterwards, and a recording of this will be available, too, so you'll have everything. Okay. Carry on. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, as a lot of you probably have realized, uh, this uh, coffee, uh, cold brew and even nitro brew coffee, is becoming uh, very popular, and I think it uh, usually, actually mostly started around Texas, and uh, it's out in California a lot, and it's popping up in the Carolinas, and in Georgia and and uh, it's kind of coming on the scene pretty quick here and and you can even get coffee on on a nitro tap at some bars and and some nice coffee shops and everything and it, it is excellent um, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, post filling purge or post filling dose and uh, nitro coffee uh, there's a lot of people out there uh, uh, you know the the brewing process for this coffee is probably very similar to the uh, to the beer brewing process, and it might even be uh, of an interest uh, to some of you out there as you are looking for more ways to expand your business, to make more money. And, and so we wanted to touch on that just a little bit because it's something that we're seeing an increase in in, in our sales and in our um, opportunities at trade shows and different things. So we thought we'd touch on it. But a lot of people want to purge or, or dose for shelf life, of course. Um, they want to reduce the dissolved oxygen, as you know. Just like in your beers and in wine and everything else, oxygen allows things to grow. And um, if you, you know, if you if you put any sort of sweetener or anything in your coffee at all and you just let it sit for a day, um, tomorrow it's got something in it, and it's not it's not just your coffee anymore. Um, so you know these people that are cold brewing these coffees and they're putting sweeteners in them or they're putting flavors in them, and oxygen is not their friend. Um, and shelf life is crucial, especially if you want to distribute further than probably five to 10 miles from where, you, where you're <laughs> brewing. Um, and uh, you're able to make multiple uh, batches and uh, you can store uh, over time. Um, and then you, uh, you can keep specialty ingredients fresh. I mean, uh, that's important, especially when you're um, talking about these, these special types of brews or special things. I mean, that even applies to beer. If you're going and buying um, these fresh ingredients daily or every week at your farmer's market or something like that. I mean, those have a specific shelf life just based on the, you know, the, the inherent properties that are of that, whether it be some kind of spice or, um, or whatever, what have you. Um, if it gets into contact with oxygen, I mean, something can grow and, uh, we can definitely, um, uh, increase your shelf life just, just with our nitrogen dosers, just like, uh, uh, coffee, these cold brew coffee people are looking at. And then when you get into nitrogenated cold brews, um, they're actually nitro and coffee to be poured from a nitro tap or something like that, or nitro brewing in a uh, to be bottled or canned. Um, 
you know, you get the same creamy mouthfeel as nitro beers, and that's the goal is uh, using our dosers. I mean, even if they nitro up coffee, they have to put it in a widget can or a widget bottle, just like uh, you guys do. So uh, by using our nitrogen dosers, it gets the same creamy mouthfeel. And, and these people that are doing coffee definitely don't have the capital of their overhead to be buying 96,000 cans uh, or 180,000 cans. So that's a big deal for them. You get the same cascading effects um, that you get uh, from your nitro beers, and uh, there's no, you know, there's no need to nitrogenate coffee in the keg. So uh, uh, here's a quote from Carl from Two Can Mobile Canning. It allows us to get into coffees, nitro beers, and any product that doesn't use CO2 to pressurize the can. Um, and that's a that's a big deal for a lot of you guys. And, and you know, if you are currently using a mobile canning company, and, and you want to get into nitrogenated beers, we're we've been working with a lot of the mobile canning companies around the country, and yeah. they do have dosers now. But the folks that don't probably will soon, or if they don't know about it, they can contact us. If there were some of the larger groups, we're in contact with them on a regular basis. But other folks might not know about it. It is for them an extremely <laughs> capital affordable product mm -hmm. because they're essentially charging everybody back out for what they have. Right. But spreading it out over a whole lot of customers, making it pretty affordable if you don't have your own canning line to still get into nitro beers, but by using a mobile canning line with a doser on it. That's correct. Yeah. So next steps. So we're going to talk, we'll talk system costs um, and accessories and, and customization. So we're just going to spitball here for, for a little bit. Um, system costs. I mean, I know that's what everybody wants to talk about, right? Everybody's concerned about money. I, you know, I completely understand that. Um, we have this, this different systems. All of you are going to be interested in the ultra doser. Um, and then we have two systems that would, you, uh, primarily target, uh, the FS 150 and the 500 S. A lot of you are, are uh, that already have a doser or that have looked at dosers have probably been priced out the, the FS150 um, and uh, can, that can do 150 cans per minute or lower which a lot of you are probably doing at most 80 cans per minute. There's some of you out there that may be doing faster but um, you know anything under 150 the FS150 can do it and I mean that system is around 17,000 list price and I know you're thinking wow that's 17 grand up front. Totally get it but I mean, the cost savings that you get is if you're doing, if you're even considering nitro uh, beers or anything like that, I mean, your your cost savings of a doser versus trying widget cans uh, in the first year, your cost savings is more than six grand. So if you if you're considering widgets versus dosers, I mean, it's it's a no brainer. I know you're gonna upfront costs in both cases, but you definitely need to go with the doser. The doser save you money, save you time, and uh, it's just a good idea. Uh, and then you know the 500s. Uh, some of you may be interested in it. It can do. Uh, it has a a, a a little bit of speed compensation, and, and basically uh, what that is is if you have a line that really doesn't run the same speed over and over again. know it you have a couple of different um, issues maybe your line speeds up and slows down or or it, it sometimes can jam up or something like that you know not everyone has a perfect line out there um, the uh, the speed compensation uh, part of the 500s um, might be something that you really want to target and that can pick up cans as they slow down speed up and so you don't miss a can because um, you know you don't want to miss a one out of a case or something like that and you know, one one can out of the case maybe not last as long as the rest of them, or not have that nitro effect. Um, but that system, the 500s, same same doser, different controller, uh, a little bit more capability. That that runs around 24,000. Uh, and again, your cost savings on that versus a, a widget is is more than is more than uh, 4,800. So uh, you still get a good cost benefit out of that uh, if you're talking nitro beers or or just flexibility with you know, your different brews that you want to do. <clears throat> so, um, 
we'll touch a little bit more here uh, before we leave, but we wanted to leave, you know, be sure you saw this, ditchthewidget.com. Uh, that's a new uh, website for us. We've got, uh, this will be posted uh, on there, and the recording and all the slides. Uh, we'll have some other information on there uh, also. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to check out chartdosers.com. Um, uh, that's another good website. It has all kinds of case studies. It has a lot of um, all of our information, our cut sheets on our ultra doser, cry doser, all of our different products, um, and, uh, along with some articles that have been written about us or um, we've helped write. Um, so there's a lot of information on there. Um, and don't you know? Don't forget we've we've been we've been working in this craft beer business for a while now. Names that you might recognize, Left Hand, um, Oscar Blues, um, Boulevard, Breckenridge, Victory. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there we've been working with for a while now, and we've done this. We've done Nitro with them. Um, we've done a couple other uh, ventures. We've, uh, you know, just for dosing in general, maybe it's it's pre-dosing or, or post-dosing. It's, it's dosing their, uh, their, standard, their standard beers, their standard brews just to help with preser uh, pressurization or preservation. And, and so there's a lot of options out there and you can talk to these guys. Um, I mean, you know, we're, we've been in, in and around the market for a long time and, and we really know what we're doing when it comes to craft beers and, and uh, giving people that, um, that experience that, uh, that a widget can't give them or, or um, just gives them a lot more flexibility and kind of differentiates their, um, their product compared to a lot of those other people out there. Not to mention, Tyler, we are also are consumers of the uh, craft beer as well. So. You mentioned that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Todd, for bringing that up again. Um, we got a couple of questions coming in here that we're going to start doing Q and A in, in just a minute here. Uh, do you have any other things as far as the? I guess on the on the nitro beer side, without the widget, uh, people ask, you know, technically, how exactly is that done? What do you What do you do to 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 make it work and I know you can't <clears throat> so so it, yeah it's uh, maybe it's a little proprietary in a way um, uh, basically uh, you know everybody's beer is a little different everybody's brews a little different I mean you know essentially you're you're making a beer right but um, maybe the uh, the co2 level and it's a little different or maybe it's 100% nitrogenated whatever it may be um, Basically, our dosers allow for customization and and uh, for really dialing it in to your specific needs. A lot of times, we'll when we're doing demos or something like that, uh, we have a lot of uh, basic parameters we put in and we say, hey, this works for 90% of the people, um, and uh, and we'll set it up that way. And and you know how we do, we do taste tests, we do dissolve oxygen testing, we do pressurization testing. Um, all those sorts of things. And, and basically it boils down to, you know, you as the brewer, what do you, does it, is it exactly how you wanted it to taste? Is it, does it react the way you want it? Does it cascade the way you want it? Does the mouth feel the same? If it's not, we can just make a couple simple adjustments on the doser and, and uh, you know, suddenly your same brew that you just did pours differently, tastes differently. And so, um, you know, that's the beauty of the nitrogen doser is that you can dial it in and you can even, uh, change a little bit about about how your your beer pours and how it drinks just with a simple uh, adjustment on the screen. Okay, and I think it's probably important too the <laughs> to share that we don't just pack this doser up in a case and and send it out. We, we ship the doser and and a tech support person yeah. to install it. So the the process involves us coming on site, being there, working with all these variables you've mentioned, and actually dial in the system for you. Uh, and, I, and that that holds true for, and hopefully I'm not promising stuff I shouldn't be promising. But if you already have a doser from Chart, we'll also help you with that too. Absolutely. So if you're if you're working with a doser currently and you use it for let's say uh, pre can or pre bottle fill, and you'd like to then expand it into nitro beers and whether using a widget or not using a widget, we'll still help you out with that and and basically take care of it. So the the technical side of it, we'll come out and, and dial everything in. And based on the beer you have and the conditions, show you what we're doing and, and, and why we're doing it that way. So it continues to be repeatable every time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I'm here in Georgia. Um, I, I know exactly how to do all this. We've got a couple other people here in Georgia that know exactly how to do this. We have an East Coast salesman 
he's an expert at setting these things up. We've got a West Coast salesman. We've got a guy that does the Central United States. We've got people in Europe, Asia. Um, uh, we've got people in South America, Central America. They all know how to do this kind of thing. And we have a technical support system that's both here and in uh, California. They travel all over the world, all over the United States. Um, and yeah, just like Judson said, I mean, we don't just ship a doser to you and be like, good luck. <laughs> um, uh, we all know how to make this work and, and we all want you to be successful. We want all want you to be satisfied. And, and not only that, do we help you set it up or, or actually set it up for you. We're going to train you. We're going to show you. You'll be like, hey, um, you know, if you want to make some changes, this is exactly how you do it. That way, when we walk away, you're confident. You know exactly what you're doing. You know how to you know how to use your doser. You know how to make the changes to your brew that you want. And uh, if there's any if there's ever any questions or any trouble or anything, we're just a phone call away. And you know if you need us, we'll come we'll come back. I mean, it, you know we're um, we pride ourselves in our ser our customer service and and all of that. Us being such a global company, we can pretty much reach anyone. Um, and not everyone can say that. There's a lot of you know, there's not a lot of people out there that can reach the amount of people we can reach and and do the things that we do because, um, you know, we've set ourselves up to be successful in that way. Cool. Okay, we got a bunch of questions here, so I'm going to start picking through a few of them and see what we've got. Uh, one of the questions is, is there a, a manufactured canning line that works better or worse for our doser? Um, I wouldn't say that. I would say that a lot of the – probably the most common one we see is – uh, a Wild Goose uh, mobile canning line. Uh, we have a very good relationship with Wild Goose. Uh, we've worked with them for a long time. Um, and we have a couple other people out, out west and in, and in Texas. Um, and uh, But I, any mobile canner, I, I, would, I wouldn't say every single one because I don't know all of them, but any of the major mobile canners uh, we fit into, no, no problem. Um, and uh, uh, we haven't had any issues fitting into in, in any of those yet. Okay. So the next question is, Is uh, do you have to dose with a greater amount of nitrogen when you don't use the widget? Uh, that just depends on, 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 on your brew, and uh, I would say um, it depends on the, the vols that you have in there, your CO2, um, um, if you, you know, how much nitrogen you're using when you're, mm -hmm. when you're brewing the beer. It's, it's, it's always a little different. It's not – it's just like I said, you know, it works for uh, for one to, you know, may work for the next, but it, it all depends on your your the chemical makeup or the, the way that you the brew the beer, and that's why we we you know that's why it's customizable. That's why it's um, um, you can make modifications, and I wouldn't say that you use any more, but you know, I don't, I'm I'm not sure because I they you know if you dose a widget, it may be a little different. Sure. There's other follow up question that somebody else had was. How much nitrogen goes in a 12 ounce can and i think your answer is going to be the same as what you just said yeah pretty much it, it varies mm -hmm. and like i said it i mean we're talking pieces of a milliliter right. in volume it, I, I i'm i mean like 0. 0.0 something all the way up to like 0. something milliliters in volume so minuscule amounts of of liquid nitrogen so here's another one about uh line speed is there a minimum line speed for the filler that needs to operate to ensure that the that the vapors are, are fully expanded into the space <clears throat> and fully evacuating the dissolved oxygen. I uh, know uh, that's the um, that's kind of a a um, I don't want to say that maybe a trial and error. Uh, I wouldn't say that anyway. Uh, Chair Form is there a minimum line speed or a, or a required line speed? We you, know, you can I think dosing as low as 10 cans per minute, which is rather slow, but um, you just adjust the doser position based on your desired results. So <clears throat> in the event that you're not getting a lot of pressure in the can or you're getting way too much, you just move the doser left to right. And we're talking an inch mm -hmm. or fractions of an inch. And you, you change your, your pressure, you know, in a great way sometimes just depending on um, how quickly it seemed or, how well it seemed, and 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 that's the that's the thing is you know that's why we sometimes carry pressure testers or offer or you know say recommend pressure testers because you want to know what your cans can take. I mean they're probably they're rated a lot of them are rated at 90 psi. I think the uh, uh, what a lot of people say is 60 ish is probably as high as you want to go, but 
in most cases, you get nowhere near that. Uh, okay. So uh, I would say that, you know, moving the doser left or right on your line, uh, there's not a, a minimum speed. Uh, and you can just uh, move that around based on the results. I mean, if you, if you burst a can, you'd be like, hey, <laughs> I'm a little too close to the seamer. Gotcha. Um, if you're getting soft cans, you can change your 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 um, your dosing, or you can um, uh, move the doser. Cool. So that's another option. Also, is if you're when you're talking about <clears throat> line speeds versus in your pressurization, uh, you can make it, uh, adjustments on your doser that can um, you can leave the doser exactly where it is, and it can change the pressure that you have in the can without even moving anything. Gotcha. So the next question, and well, I guess a, there's a part of that same question too is. Is there a significant difference between the amount of nitrogen going to a can versus a bottle? Oh no, it's um, there's not a. Um, it's based I, on the. Yeah, it's based on the amount of headspace. It's not really a, uh, you in a bottle you would probably see maybe a little bit smaller droplet, but not it would it's negligible really. You would say it's a wash, um, so it's not a benefit or a or a or a, you know a detriment in either way, but. Uh, like I said, you would still, you know, the bottles might be a little more likely to burst if you're, you know, getting them too high in pressure. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it's not if you bust one, you know, make an adjustment. It's it's not that uh, it's not dangerous or anything. Gotcha. So in your experience, <clears throat> how does the product temperature affect how fast the the liquid turns to gas? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, the the liquid nitrogen is sitting at negative 200 and something. Mm -hmm. um, and it's liquid all the way until it exits the dosing head. But as soon as it exits the dosing head, it begins to vaporize anyway. Um, so, yeah, you would say that hotter atmospheres or maybe hotter products, the it vaporizes quicker uh, or it flashes off at a faster rate. Um, and that's true. But unless you're filling at a very high temperature, like, you know, we're talking like 100 degrees or, or something like that, um, versus maybe 30 degrees you're not going you know you're not going to see a big change so if you're feeling an ambient versus um you know 40 degrees or something like that it's it's not that big of a deal you can make a small adjustment and and clean that that gap right up it's when you get into the your what we call hot filling when like the product has been cooked or something like like in cans or um vegetables you know that's been pre-cooked it's really warm yeah it's very very warm okay. So a couple of questions around the, the nitro beer and the, and the widget and that type of thing. One is specifically is how do you increase the the head retention on a nitro beer with a dosher? How do you increase it? <clears throat> um, so uh, a little bit of that is proprietary, I would say. But okay. I, I will say that um, um, you make a you make a very simple adjustment on the doser. Um, up or down, uh -huh. uh, and and you know um, by doing so you uh, you give yourself uh, more head retention or, or less head retention depending on what your goal is. Gotcha. Um, here's an easy question for you: Can you use it with glass bottles? Absolutely. <laughs> Left hand nitro milk stout. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we've got here. I've had a few questions come in about. Um, do we service certain areas at Panama, Colombia, and a few of the states? We service pretty much everywhere in the world. And I'm going to put in the chat window real quick here a link that you can have, and we'll email it out again later if you don't want to grab it now. If you go there, that's a that, there's a form you can fill out with your information, what city, state, country you're in, wherever you're at, and uh, also your contact information. And we'll have one of our technical sales folks get back to you and, and discuss it. any more questions than you have from today uh, any other specifics that you didn't have a chance to ask and also just more about our products but uh, the, they can reach out to you by that the reason we ask for where you're at is just to make sure we get you to the right person let's see you get a lot more questions coming here now can you read that one the, the question is basically does does the product work with a certain brand of a filler and and I think the answer is yes yes did. yes it does you know. yeah yeah um, it works with almost every filler that I've ever come in contact with. Okay. Uh, there is one question here about uh, 17,000. That is in US, USD, oh, okay. US dollars. 
And what's the recommended pressure tester? Uh, we don't recommend a specific pressure tester. Um, a lot of people have their own preference. We sell one, uh, okay. of course, and if you you'd like one, we can we'd gladly um, sell you one. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I can't think of how much it costs right off the top of my head. Again, we're not here to sell you anything. Per no se. hard sales here. Yeah, no hard sales. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's not a. We don't necessarily recommend a specific pressure tester. It's really a pure personal preference and price point, of course. Okay. Um, and then the other question from a price standpoint we just got was, does this include the whole system, the price you're quoting, or does that include the tank and the delivery system? Uh, good, good question. Good question. So that actually. Uh, that price is the doser, the stand, uh, the support. You get different nozzles, which is you know dictates your droplet size and um, and even shape at times. Um, uh, all your electronics, a uh, one two three style hose, which connects from your doer to your your doser and uh, your controller. Um, and then the doers, the liquid doers, um, that or the bulk tank are most often rented uh, by our our customers or distributors, uh, you know, you, you got the majors and and uh, the smaller guys, you know, the air gases, the air liquids, and then you, you got your regional distributors and whatnot. A lot of times you can just rent those. They deliver the doer and um, or they come and fill them up. Or, and um, it seems to be it offers you up more flexibility. We sell them, too, because we manufacture them, but that those are not included in the price because, you know, I don't know your system. Um, you know, you might want a – different system than you have anyway um, when, when we say the doser and and so we, we tend to you know we are turnkey we will set you up with the entire system if you want it but that price only includes basically the doser and some folks too currently will be using a bulk LN2 tank somewhere in the facility and and this, you can tap into that absolutely it doesn't need a dedicated tank for that one question we haven't had so far but we usually do is what is the cost the cost of nitrogen um, we always give the, the price of about a dollar a liter. So, um, and if you, <laughs> if you're dosing at 40 cans per minute, uh, for, you know, during a day, during a, a run, I mean, you might, we're talking like five liters of nitrogen, if that, <laughs> um, you know, that's depending on, you know, your, your droplet size and any kind of, um, other things you might be doing with your liquid, but, very minimal amounts of nitrogen because okay. and the, the beauty of that is it's quantifiable so if i know your containers per minute and how much nitrogen i'm putting in each can which i and i i can tell you based on our settings on our doser and everything i can tell you how much nitrogen you use on a daily basis i can tell you how much you're going to use on a yearly basis and you know that's something that can really help you um save some money Gotcha. <laughs> and I just got a question that said that Judson can't type, so the, the link doesn't work. <laughs> I'll put the link back in in just a minute when we get done answering the questions. Sorry about that. I've just got the fat fingers today. Um, so some of the other questions we have here is, uh, do, do we need two machines to, to dose, two bottles, if we're not using an inline? Um, so... That's a loaded question in a way. <laughs> I need to know what. Can you unload it for us? Yeah, I need to know. Yeah, how um, how are the bottles positioned? Are they side by side and they index one row at a time, or are they, you know, um, filling two bottles at a time and they index one column at a time? If that makes any sense, um. You know, if they're if they're using if they're being filled side by side and then they roll down a conveyor or they move down a conveyor in single file, they can be um, filled in, uh, in no problem. But if they're side by side, as in, um, and they pass by the doser, you know, and uh, and they're, they look like they're stacked in a way, then yeah, you would need a uh, something else, which is called a linear doser. We can talk about that later. And another question we had is if we have a hand bottling or canning line, well, I guess hand bottling line, um, will the doser still work with that? So to do like a two up bottle type of system? Um, the only, I mean, the only thing is, is you know, the bottle needs to to pass by the 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 doser. Mm -hmm. um, so it 
this sounds funny, but you could literally just put a, a roller conveyor in, and push the bottle by the doser and it would dose. Okay. Um, you know, it needs some way to pass by the doser. I mean, you can put it under the doser to make it dose, but that's just a, you know, it, you're. There's not like a foot switch option to. Not with this. Not there. with this. No. Okay. Let's see what else we got. We got a coffee question here. And it says we're in the coffee business and don't have any CO2 and don't want any in our product. Can you still do a nitro pour without the widget? Yes. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the, the answer is the, if we look at the setup, we've got yeah. some ways to talk about that. Um, you know, you contact us and, you know, we'll, we can have a side conversation, but we can pretty much make anything happen. Okay. So now the other question is the exact opposite. If you're doing a, if you're doing a highly carbonated beer, two and a half dollars, <laughs> something like that, uh, will it still work? Yes, it will. Uh, we've done some recently with 2.47, uh, 2.48, uh, some over 2.5. Um, yeah, it can be done. Okay. Cool. I'm doing two things at once here, so sorry. Here's somebody that's using a filler that's not in line. I guess it's sort of the same as the side-by-side -side we talked about earlier. Um, two to four bottle type of system. It's just a matter of having something to actuate, as you said. Yeah. That doser. And then... We'll check the time, make sure we're not running out. We've got a couple more minutes, so we'll do a couple more questions. Uh, you know, one of the questions we had before, which was sort of a sales question, was uh, what's the delivery time if you bought like a 1500 today? What is, what's your standard lead time on getting that product? Oh, out? an FS150? Yeah. Oh, um, we say standard is about four weeks, okay. but um, we can do it in less than three. Less than three. Yeah. Okay. Um, one question we had before too is that they wanted to understand the the basis behind what actually happens in a nitro beer once it's been poured out, whether you use the widget or not. It's actually been poured into a glass. What's actually happening there on the cascading and that type of thing? Why, oh. does, why does it do it? Is the question. Oh. Um. So the, the nitrogen, it's, it's, uh, I look at it similar to like a CO2 effect in a way, but the nitrogen is in, is in, inside the brew. And, uh, when you're pouring it out and you're agitating that nitrogen, that nitrogen cat is what we call cascades. Um, it begins to, um, cascade and bubble and it releases the flavor of the beer. Um, essentially if you don't have that same cascading effect, you don't get that same smooth mouthfeel, you don't get that same taste. Um, and so without that cascade, um, the, the, the flavors aren't released. Okay. Somebody asked, what does the widget actually do? And I guess we should say we're not in the business of selling widgets, but it's, it's essentially it's an agitator. Yeah. It agitates the beer, um, using a, um, a drop of liquid nitrogen or a, a pre-charged, uh, nitrogen, uh, dosage. <laughs> Um, and so I, I think we're just about out of time here. I wanted to think through and see, if, first of all, thank Tyler for answering all the questions and let you all know I, I did finally get the correct link on there. I just tested it and it went to the right page. So if you do have more questions or you want to ask some more technical things, maybe something very specific to your product or your line, you can go there, put that information in, we'll all get back to you and, and answer those questions. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at... Uh, chart underscore beverage so you can keep up with chart and uh, where we're going to be and all the different trade shows that we'll be uh, attending so we don't have a facebook account but todd's looking for more friends i am he exactly yeah, it's later. very lonely you know when you're, <laughs> when you're at the bar drinking by yourself and uh, i'll be at a uh, i'll be at the trade show there and that was another question we had craft brewers conference uh, sorry oh well i'll be at the trade show walking the show up in uh, in nashville which is later this year, okay. but we are going to be at Craft Brewers Conference, which is in Philadelphia this year. I myself will not be there. Um, a couple of my sales guys will, and um, some engineers. I have to go uh, to the to India for for some business. <laughs> so um, uh, I had planned on being there, but uh, duty calls. Um, 
but the doser will the be doser, there. The doser, more importantly, the doser yeah, will be there. The and he'll ul- be doing it. The ultra doser will indeed be on site, and uh, you can go see it work. Um, we'll have it there with cans or bottles or both, and uh, you can talk to a couple of the guys and and uh, see what they've got going on, what they've got in store, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, love to set up some meetings with you and um, even some demonstrations, whatever it may be. And uh, we're flexible and, and we just want to help you be successful and, and help you bring to market exactly what you want. And just before we go, we do have two minutes. So we'll take one last question that just snuck in there. And there's a question about, about shelf life, which I think we went over before about those fresh ingredients and that type of thing. Do we have an idea as far as shelf life, what, what the extension is on that? Uh, well, I mean, we've got, um, you know, a lot of stuff, we have a case study actually on the website that talks about uh, wine shelf lives, and uh, we're we're talking you know extending shelf lives by by weeks, we're twenty or more days. Um, you know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you know that's almost a month longer that your product can be on the shelf, um, at, you know at a store or even in your warehouse before before shipping. So um, and like and again it, it does come down to what's in your beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, did we dose it for uh, headspace and, pre- and uh, preservation mm-hmm. uh, or did we, you know, truly just nitro it or, or, or something else? So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, um, you know, we, we bring those um, dissolved oxygen levels way down and your shelf life's, you know, 20 or more days, um, at least a couple of weeks. So cool. So I think we just about hit our time. So I want to thank everybody for being here and listening in today. As I mentioned before, right there in your chat window is a link. We'll send out an email later today with that link along with some handouts. And uh, so if you have questions, we can get to you there. Also, Tyler does have a, a cost calculator that we can run through with you. If you do have questions as far as the payback on it, uh, maybe you have to work through a corporate structure and do an ROI payback to know what the savings are by using a doser based on your specific application. We can help you with that, too and run through all those numbers and put something together for that. Yep. So we really appreciate everybody being here today.